Hi there, it's Nasra here with Return to Wholeness Healing Services. I am a mental health coach with 17 years experience as a psych nurse. And I also have a lived experience of reversing um, antidepressant induced bipolar disorder with metabolic therapies and the ketogenic diet. So if you're here asking if metabolic therapies and the ketogenic diet could reverse or help bipolar depression, that is also the question that I'm asking myself and going through that process right now. So I have been implementing metabolic therapies and the ketogenic diet since um, I would say 2016. I was doing that even before I learned what these things were. Uh, and looking back now, I realize those are the interventions that I put in place that actually really change the way my body and brain has been working. Now, it's been a very interesting journey, but it was about a year ago that I had completely, it's been a year since I had completely tapered off of lithium, which was a medication that was supposed to help with hypomania and also bipolar depression. So I have been completely off of that for a year. And typically around this time is when I, actually it would start around early August is when the depressive episodes would start. And I would experience increased sleep, low energy issues with my cognition, um, suicidal thoughts, uh, very uh, poor appetite and all of those symptoms that comprise of a bipolar depression. And I would say um, the past year, I've also had a lot of changes in my life um, with you know, going through the metabolic therapies and keto diet and uh, tapering off of not just lithium, but a couple of other medications as well. So there's been a whole lot of change. And I think right now um, in about um, like in this time, in the past few weeks, I've noticed a little bit of a shift in my energy and I have needed a little bit more sleep. And I would say my mood is a little bit lower, but if I can compare it to how things have been previously when I was on medication, um, at the worst times, if that was like a, a 10 out of 10, right now it feels like it's probably like a two to three. So it's very, it's manageable. I feel like I have to still focus very much on proper sleep, uh, lowering stress. I go to the gym and do strength training or walk every other day. So three to four times a week strength training and um, every other day going for a walk. I have to really mind my nutrition, like no caffeine, uh, lots of healthy fats, lots of meat, um, and um, also be focused on doing the things that I want to do. So there's lots of things that go into what would be considered metabolic therapies and definitely the keto diet. Um, I find like I increasing the fat and protein in my diet has been incredibly helpful. So my answer right now, I would say um, the past year has been a huge adjustment. And like I said, in my body and my functioning and my brain in a very positive direction. But I also, um, to some extent was kind of questioning myself and wondering like, how is this going to work in the fall and winter when I think is like actually more challenging to go through um, a depressive episode. And um, I would have to say at this point, like there's also fears around like when you've been in the system for a long time and I was on medication for 13 years and off medications now for about a year. And so there's always that fear around, oh my goodness, you know, my is my illness gonna come back? Am I gonna be able to function? Um, is this diet and all these interventions that I'm doing, are they actually going to work for me to continue to maintain my health and move forward? And I think my answer overall is 
um, there's an emotional component to it, like the fear and the hesitation when you have been labeled or diagnosed and have had an experience of ups and downs and going through a lot of challenges in your life as a mental health patient and going through the system and also experiencing adverse effects from medications and maybe your illness is not completely controlled. And going through that whole process can be incredibly traumatic. So the fear and the doubt is totally understandable, but also to recognize that mental health is not just about the absence or um, presence of medications or the absence or presence of like certain symptoms. It's kind of a all pervasive experience and it's a range of experiences that you have in different areas that impact your mental health. Stress being one, you know, this past year I've had a, fa a close family member who had a life-threatening illness that had to be treated and they had to be hospitalized for a while. I moved across the country to um, and, and was apart from my daughter for the first time. I tapered off of medications. I also left my career as a psych nurse and started my own business. So there's lots of positives that have happened and there's also really challenging things that have happened. So, and, and another thing I would say is I really, once I tapered off of the medications, I was able to really be in touch with my emotions and feelings and a lot of grief and came up from the past and what I've gone through in the mental health system, as well as personal things that have happened over the years connected to that and connected to what was occurring the past year of having to give up, you know, an identity as um, the things that I thought were sort of like an anchor in my life have drastically changed. So I don't want to just like relegate the, the, the answer to the question, it, it's not just about keto and, or metabolic therapies necessarily. I think the lens from which we view mental health has to be a lot broader to include all of these factors, connections, virtuality, stress, trauma, diet, exercise, meaningful work, like all of these things come into play. But if I have to answer that question, which is something, like I said, I am thinking about and grappling with even as we speak, I would say this, where I am today is so much better than I have ever been in terms of being on medication or um, especially being on medication and having to live with the adverse effects. Do I still have to really um, manage my health and do all the things that I need to do? in order to stay balanced, yes. And I also think the first year when you're off of medication, your body and brain are start, you know, still normalizing and trying to get back to homeostasis and operate without the medications. And even though people are told that those medications are not addictive and they don't impact anything, I think there is a process you go through of sort of detoxing and your brain being able to make those neurotransmitters and uh, sort of like that comp compensatory mechanism is not there anymore um, to have th what the medications were doing for your body to actually start doing those things for itself. And so I think I have been going through that process and my body is still going through that process. And I feel like I've done a really um, good job of taking care of myself and focusing on self-care and applying all of these things to improve my health. So do I believe that keto works for bipolar depression? Yes, I believe it does. And But I also believe that it takes your body time to recover. And it wasn't just an overnight thing. Like I said, I have been implementing metabolic therapies, um, including intermittent fasting, including, you know, um, being in ketosis with, um, initially with carnivore and then the ketogenic diet and, um, getting off of birth control pill, 
um, exploring spirituality, healthy connection with my partner, all of those things have contributed and built up over time. So it's not keto uh, for bipolar disorder is something that is going to take time and it takes implementation and a huge lifestyle change. And initially, when you taper off medications and implement these things, it's going to, there's going to be a period of adjustment. And I think the past year has been that for me. And this is the first um, fall and winter. This is the first year that I had been completely off of the medications. And so going into that has been um, slightly challenging, but I feel like I'm managing it okay. And the other pieces, I think, I also believe that I'm originally from East Africa, Ethiopia. Like we, I was born near the equator, very warm environment. I also feel like there is some um, kind of an adjustment and change around the weather in Canada um, around fall and winter and the cold kind of weather. I think that impacts me. And... Um, light exposure like the days when they're getting shorter and um, not enough sunlight i try every day to be in the sun as much as i can and get some fresh air so that helps and um, exercise helps and definitely the keto diet has been instrumental the past year in being able to taper off the medications and to stay off of them and I would say, like I said, there is definitely a shift that I'm feeling right now, but I am taking it to be as just a cue for me to really double down on all the things that I've done in the last, you know, six, seven years and get through these next few months. And I wanted to be completely upfront and honest about my journey and that, you know, implementing keto and metabolic therapies, it's a serious intervention, but it also requires a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline. And for many people it works. And I, this is not to say that it is something that's going to work for everyone. There is research being done now to find out sort of <clears throat> the implication of uh, diet and mental health. That's called, you know, metabolic uh, psychiatry. And it's still in the early stages, but there's lots of people who are getting phenomenal results from this. And so if you're somebody who has, you know, bipolar disorder, bipolar depression, and you're really struggling, it's definitely worth for you to investigate and to learn more. Um, feel free to reach out if you require additional support. And uh, if you're new here, please um, hit the like and subscribe button if you're enjoying this content. And I'm going to go into a much more detail in an upcoming uh, podcast in the next, probably it will be out in the next week or so, and review sort of like my journey in the past year in terms of implementing keto and what I have experienced in the, you know, spring and fall, spring and summer, and also the fall and winter, but throughout the past year, what the journey has been like, um, going through that process so i hope this serves you in some way i believe it's hopeful and i feel uh, grateful for where i'm at and that i'm able to still go through this process and continue to implement these things and feel better um, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily perfect but it's workable and it's manageable um, and I feel like people have told me that once they started implementing keto, it might take like, you know, a year for you to adjust, but then the second year is a bit better. Like your body heals as, and your brain as time goes by. So I feel like this might be like the hardest year, the first year when you're detoxing and adjusting to the new lifestyle and the diet and your body and brain try to function without the medications and hopefully as time goes by that gets better and better and better and so that's been so far my experience um, the past year but it doesn't mean that it wasn't without some challenges along the way and I'm going to kind of have an update and review of the year 
how it's been and what has, you know, worked, what hasn't worked in the upcoming video. But I thank you for watching this video and um, I appreciate your time and please leave me your questions and comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.